This is an update to an older video that I did that takes people through how to answer all of these chart questions that you'll find on the FAA remote pilot test. This new version includes some new questions and clear explanations. And what I've actually done for this video is I've gone through the past 500 students to take my part 107 practice test. And I've pulled out the most missed chart questions so that we can see what most people are missing now uh, why they might be missing those questions, and how to find the correct answers. You can find that full Part 107 practice test and the remote pilot test prep course in links in the video description here, along with a coupon to save 20% off of both of those. So let's get into these chart reading walkthroughs. Our first question here says, refer to figure 23, area 3. What is the floor of the Savannah Class C airspace at the shelf area? outer circle. So we're going to go over to area three and find Savannah, which is to the south of area three. That's the only class C airspace on this chart. And remember, class C airspace has two areas. It has an inner core area that starts at the surface and goes up to a designated altitude. And then it has an outer shelf area that starts above the ground and goes up to the same altitude. So this question is asking about that outer ring, the outer shelf area. And it's specifically asking, what is the floor? The floor being the bottom of the airspace and the ceiling being the top of the airspace. The numbers in that airspace, in that ring, follow that same format, ceiling and floor. We have 13 on the bottom. We always add two zeros to those. And we have 1,300 feet. But in the answers, there are two options with 1,300. There's an above ground level altitude and an above sea level altitude, or MSL. Remember that when we're talking about airspace, except for class G and class E, all airspace is in height above sea level, or MSL. Because when you have these larger aircraft flying higher above the ground at faster speeds, it's safer and it makes more sense to reference altitudes in height above sea level instead of above the ground. So the correct answer here is B, 1,300 feet MSL. You wanna make sure that you're actually taking the time to read every single option in the answers. It's really easy to just see 1,300 as the first answer, and that corresponds to the 13 you saw on the chart, and just pick A because that's the first one you saw. This goes to one of my FAA test taking tips that you'll see later, where you'll see that the FAA does this intentionally to try to trick you. They wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the details. So read the full question and read all of the answers before making your choice. For the next two questions, we'll be here on figure 20. And the first one says, refer to figure 20, area three. With ATC authorization, you are operating your small unmanned aircraft approximately four statute miles southeast of Elizabeth City Regional Airport. What hazard is indicated to be in that area? So the first thing we need to do is find Elizabeth City at Area 3. And it's just to the southwest of Area 3. It's this class Delta airspace. So that's our reference point. And it's telling us that we are operating four statute miles southeast of that airport. At the top of this figure, you have a few different distance scales. The top one is in nautical miles, and the second one is in statute miles and we need to measure a distance of four statute miles. Since this is all based on paper, you have your paper test supplement booklet and scratch paper that you can mark on. Take that scratch piece of paper and measure out four statute miles. Those are the four smaller tick marks on the left side of the reference. Once you have that measured out, take one end down to Elizabeth City. Here's four statute miles to the south, and then we'll just rotate that over to the east and we're looking in this general area here at four statute miles southeast of that airport. Now, the only hazard that we see directly in this area, there's a tower at 226 feet. It says blimp hangers also, but none of the answer options reference other buildings. There's this little arrow though, and if we follow that arrow, we get to this box that says, caution, unmarked balloon on cable to 3,008 feet MSL, check notums. We can immediately cross out the first option here, and then that leaves two options that talk about the unmarked balloon. Most people who are answering this question are answering option B, 
even though that box specifically says MSL. There's no guessing here. This goes back to the last question where people are answering questions too fast without reading all of the options. So slow down, don't mark the first number that you see that says 3008, because the correct answer here is C, the unmarked balloon on a cable up to 3008 feet MSL. If we stay on this chart for another one of the most missed questions, this says refer to figure 20, area four. A small unmanned aircraft is being launched two nautical miles northeast of the town of Hertford. What is the height of the highest obstacle? So we need to go to area four and find Hertford, and we see that north of area four. This is another question where we need to measure out distance, but this one is in nautical miles and not statute miles, so we're going to use the top distance scale and measure out two nautical miles on our piece of paper. That's two tick marks. We're gonna put one end of that on Hertford, and here's two nautical miles north, and then we need to rotate it to the east, so we're northeast. This one's confusing a lot of people because two of those answer options are in this small little area. There is a 399 foot MSL tower. That's this guy right here, north of Hertford. But if we measure that out, that's about three nautical miles north, almost directly north of the town of Hertford. But we wanna know about the towers two nautical miles more to the east. And if we go more to the east, we find 514 feet MSL and 500 feet AGL. That's this tower right here with the line going to it. Remember the top number is the MSL height of the tower and the bottom number is the AGL height of the tower. So the only other two numbers as options and the answers are 500 feet. That 500 feet being on the bottom means that it is an AGL altitude. So the correct answer here is B, 500 feet AGL. This next question is a question that I wrote that you'll find in my test bank. It's one of the most missed questions on the practice test, and it's very similar to other questions that you'll see on the FAA test. You've been hired to photograph some real estate in Gardnerville, area two, at 400 feet AGL and below. Do you need authorization? So the first thing we need to do is go to area two and find Gardnerville, and we find Gardnerville just to the southwest of area two, and we need to figure out if we need authorization here. That means we need to identify which type of airspace we're in. The only airspace line surrounding Gardnerville is this thick shaded magenta line, and that indicates Class E airspace that starts at 700 feet AGL. Underneath the Class E airspace here, you'll find Class G golf airspace. Class G airspace is uncontrolled, and that means that you do not need authorization to fly here. Yes, it is near an airport, but as part 107 pilots, you don't need authorization to fly within five nautical miles of an airport. And if you're 400 feet and below, you will not be in class E airspace. So the correct answer here is no, you do not need authorization. This is class G golf airspace. Our next question has us reference figure 78. You have been contracted to inspect towers located approximately four nautical miles southwest of the Sioux Gateway Airport operating an unmanned aircraft. What is the maximum altitude above ground level that you are authorized to operate over the top of the towers? So the first thing we need to do is find the Sioux Gateway Airport. That's the one right in the middle or pretty close to the middle. We see this blue information block, Sioux Gateway, and that corresponds to the blue airport next to it. So it's talking about this airport right here. The runway configuration kind of looks like a Y. That's the airport that we're referencing. Now that we have our reference, we need to find our next location, which is four nautical miles southwest. So we're gonna measure out our distance scale like we did on the previous questions, four nautical miles, that's the scale on the top. Transfer that piece of paper over to the middle of that airport, and then move that in a direction of southwest. We see that the closest towers in that area are a cluster of towers here, where the top is at 1,498 feet MSL, which corresponds to 402 feet AGL. That's the top of the towers above ground level is 402 feet. And remember that under part 107, we're allowed to fly 400 feet above any structure. So we take that 402 foot height for the towers, and we add 400 to that for our limit, 
And we come up with 802 feet above the ground, or AGL, which is answer C. A lot of people are reading too much into this question because it is within that class delta airspace. But remember that this question is not asking anything about airspace or authorization. This is simply just a math problem. So find the height of the towers and add 400 feet. That's all you need to do for this question. We are going to stay on figure 78 for this next question also. You have been hired to use your small UAS to inspect the railroad tracks from Blencoe, which is southeast of Sioux City, to Onawa. Will ATC authorization be required? The first thing we need to do, like all of our other questions, is to find our geographic reference point. And it says we're going to be inspecting the railroad tracks between Blencoe and Onawa, which is southeast of Sioux City. Sioux City being right here, we follow the railroad tracks out of Sioux City. Those are the black lines with the tick marks across them. And we find Onawa. And if we keep following those railroad tracks, we'll find Blencoe, which is this circle right here. So this is the area that we're going to be operating, inspecting the railroad tracks between these two points. Now that we know that, the question is asking if we'll need ATC authorization, which means we need to figure out which type of airspace that we're in operating in this area. We have all of these thick shaded magenta lines around us. That's class E echo airspace starting at 700 feet above the ground. All undesignated airspace outside of that, class E starts at 1,200 feet above the ground. Below that is class G, golf airspace, which is uncontrolled. Remember, we don't need ATC authorization to fly in uncontrolled airspace. There is no portion of this flight that will put us in controlled airspace, so the correct answer is B. No, your entire flight is in class G airspace. A is incorrect because the only class D airspace is in Sioux City, and we are well outside of Sioux City. Onawa does have an airport here, but it's a magenta airport, meaning that it does not have a control tower, and it's also an uncontrolled airspace, so no authorization is required, and that's why C is incorrect. This next question is about the airport information block. Refer to figure 21, area 1. After receiving authorization from ATC to operate a small unmanned aircraft near Minot International Airport while the control tower is operational, which radio communication frequency could be used to monitor manned aircraft and ATC communications? So let's go to area 1 and find Minot International Airport, which is up here at the top of the chart, and it's asking about a frequency. Remember that radio frequencies are usually three numbers with a decimal point and then a couple of numbers after that. They usually start with one, and we have three of those here. We have 118.2, 118.725, and 122.95. The 118.2 has the letters CT in front of it, and that stands for control tower. And that is the correct answer here. Remember from our previous lessons that ASOS is a weather frequency, so that'll tell you the weather and nothing else. And then 122.95 is the Unicom frequency that pilots use to find parking and order fuel and things like that. We are going to stay on figure 21 for this next question. What airport is located approximately 47 degrees, 40 minutes north latitude, and 101 degrees, 26 minutes west longitude? Let's first work on our latitude to figure out how far north of the equator we are, which is 47 degrees, 40 minutes. If you look at the lines of latitude here, you won't find 47 degrees. We have 48 degrees, and we have another unmarked line below that, but that's all we see for lines of latitude. Remember that each one of these quadrants is 30 minutes. And so if we go south from 48 degrees, we're getting closer to the equator, those numbers get smaller, this next line of latitude to the south is 47 degrees, 30 minutes. The line of latitude that we're looking for is 47 degrees, 40 minutes. So we're going to need to move closer to that 48 degree line. We're going to go north from 30 minutes to 40 minutes. So we're going to count 10 tick marks. And remember, every 10, they have the larger tick mark here that's on both sides. So this is 47 degrees, 40 minutes right here. This would be 47 degrees, 50 minutes, and then 48 degrees. 
but we're gonna put our piece of paper on that 47 degrees, 40 minutes line. That helps you mark your latitude. Now we need to find our longitude, 101 degrees, 26 minutes. 101 degrees is marked on this chart. The next big line of longitude over to the west or to the left, further away from the prime meridian is 101 degrees, 30 minutes, which is almost 26. We're just gonna subtract four from that, go four tick marks closer to 101 degrees. And where those two lines intersect, that's the airport that we're looking for. The only airport in this area is the Garrison Airport. And now for our final question here, refer to figure 26, area two. While monitoring the Cooperstown CTAF, you hear an aircraft announce that they are midfield left downwind to runway 13. Where would the aircraft be relative to the runway? Well, to answer this question, you don't even really need the chart. We're gonna use it to double check ourselves, but this is just a traffic pattern question. And I would encourage you to not try to do this in your head because when we try to do things in our head, sometimes we make mistakes and there's a lot riding on this. So just draw it all out on that scratched piece of paper that you're provided at the testing center. The first thing we're going to do is draw our compass rows, two lines intersecting each other at 90 degrees. We're gonna label those with the four cardinal directions, starting with north at the top and then going clockwise, east, south, and west. We know that this pilot is going to be landing on runway 13. And what that means is that when they're on final approach and when their wheels touch down on the runway, their compass is going to be reading 130. 130 is roughly between east and south. You don't need to be exact here, so we're just gonna put a little X right here. This is the direction that they're going to be facing when they're landing on that runway, which means when they're on final approach, they're going to be over here facing in this direction. And if we look at the chart and we find Cooperstown, that orientation of the runway on the chart roughly corresponds to what we drew out on the compass here. Then we're going to draw the traffic pattern. This pilot says they are left downwind, which means they are making left-hand turns. In order to get to this final approach path, they will have made a left-hand turn from the base leg. And then to get from the base leg, they would have made a left-hand turn from the downwind. The downwind is the long leg that is parallel to the runway. And when they say they're left downwind, now this all checks out. These are all left-hand turns in the traffic pattern. So if they are midfield, left downwind, they are parallel to the middle of the runway, where would they be relative to that runway? The options here may not make a lot of sense because you may look at this and immediately say, oh, the aircraft is north of the runway, but that is not an option here. So we're gonna use the process of elimination, which is another one of the test taking tips in that video. The aircraft is clearly not south, so we're going to eliminate B. And it's really difficult to justify being able to say that the aircraft is to the west of the runway. Since the runway is oriented northwest to the southeast, they're not really on the west side of that. So the only other thing that could make sense is the east. Again, because of that northwest-southeast alignment, the aircraft being here on this side when they're midfield downwind, east is the only option here that really makes any sense at all. And that's the correct answer here. So use this same process when you're going through all of the questions that have to do with reading the charts. Find where you are first, make sure you understand what the question is asking, eliminate any obviously incorrect answers, and choose the one that makes the most sense. I hope this video now helps you answer all of these chart reading questions with confidence. If you want even more help on all of the other test topics with the same kind of helpful content, you can find that in my full remote pilot test prep course. It covers all of the other tricky questions that might trip you up. It's helped thousands of students, has a 99.8% pass rate, and I know it'll help you pass also. You can find the link to that full course in the video here, along with a coupon for 20% off for my YouTube viewers. And there are free previews available if you wanna try before you buy. Please let me know if you have any other questions about anything that we discussed here. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.